Um, today's topic that we are going to discuss is uh, using AI tools with the most popular uh, image editing tool that is Photoshop, right? So we will be seeing how to use AI in Photoshop and a quick uh, intro about myself before we proceed with the session. So my name is Rishika and I'm going to be the trainer for this particular uh, webinar and I have more than eight years of experience in the field of design and development. My key skill areas have been in the field of uh, Adobe uh, Creative Cloud, the whole library, most of it, the software is inside it. So I've worked with the Illustrator, I've worked with Photoshop, InDesign, and I've also gained knowledge about uh, most of the programming languages as well, as you can see on my skill, right? I have got certification from Adobe for as an instructor for design and layout. I'm also a Microsoft certified trainer. And uh, yeah, I believe in a glow, uh, motto that uh, whenever you are stuck anywhere, don't worry, there's always a solution to any kind of a problem. So you just need to look for it and implement the same, right? So yeah, we'll be talking about Adobe Photoshop today. And before we do that, let me ask a quick question to all of you. You can reply me on the chat and uh, let me know how many of you are already aware about the Photoshop or uh, the Adobe tools. You can reply your answers on the chat. Have you worked on it before or is it like first time you are hearing about this tool? For your reference, I've shared my screen also and you can see. OK. All right. Oh, wow, that's great to know. OK. All right. So I can see most of you, uh, there are first timers also and uh, most of you have already used the tool maybe somewhere in your institute or somewhere in your professional career, right? So in Adobe for the graphic design, we have three major tools over here. That is Photoshop, Illustrator and InDesign. Now to explain you what is exactly the difference between these three and uh, which one you should use and when which uh, one you can prefer. So I'll just uh, share my screen for another option here. OK, so when we talk about Photoshop, Illustrator or InDesign, any of these tools, even if you are a beginner, you will be able to at least uh, get to know the basic use of these tools. So all three of them are capable of graphic designing, but just like we have expert doctors for a specific uh, field, we have expert engineers for a specific field. Over here also, we have some expertise for these softwares Photoshop is majorly used when you want to work with raster images or raster formats don't get confused with the term raster here in the next one I'll explain you what is the difference between raster and vector right you can understand it like this it is majorly used for editing and working on images as the name suggests Photoshop right and uh, second one, Illustrator is used when you want to work with vector images or vector formats, right? So this is majorly your when you want to design logos, icons or uh, illustrations, any kind of a vector graphic like uh, the one which you want to reuse in small sizes and you want to use the large sizes of it as well, then you might want to refer to the illustrator for the designing and uh, creating your own logos or uh, any of the artwork. In design, when do we use this? When you have to work with text layouts, so that is basically when you are working for the publications, like you want to, you know, get a book or a magazine where you have to do the most of the print material, right? And there is a fixed uh, set which you have for the books. You need to set a layout, right? That, okay, the table of content is going to go like this, then the second page and from the first page to the 100th page, maybe you want to fo uh, follow a fixed layout. So that 
is easier when you use InDesign. It becomes easier to design the layout of your books, to publish your books, to work with the publication work. Okay, you can do the graphic designing work in InDesign, but compared to Illustrator and Photoshop, InDesign is major focus of it is in uh, publication. So we are going to talk about Photoshop today. And before I go with that, let me explain you the difference between raster and vector, which we have introduced over here. So what exactly is the difference? Raster images, you might have not heard the term raster, but I'm sure you might be aware about some of the formats. Whenever you download the image, the format of the image is either .jpg or sometimes it's .png. Sometimes you are downloading .gif or any other format which is going to be like these are your most famous raster formats. What happens in this? They are made up of pixels. Pixels are like tiny, tiny square blocks which come together to create your graphic on the web. So whatever you see on your screen, most of it is in pixels. So if you zoom in uh, quite a lot, you will be able to see there will not in the text, but yeah, in the other areas of the design, you might be able to see a blurry square. Can you see this? There's a slight bit blurriness over here in this one. These are your pixels. These graphics are made up of pixels, right? But if I talk about the text, this is a vector. So the sharpness of the uh, text or the vector graphics is going to be more. And even if you zoom in, it's not going to blur out. That's the main difference between raster and vector over here. So raster images, they are made up of pixels and they blur out when zoomed in. Okay, so what about vector? What are they made up of? Let's see that. Okay, so most famous vector formats, what are they? The very popular one is dot SVG, which is also known as scalable vector graphic. Then you have dot AI, that's the extension for Adobe Illustrator. And then you have dot uh, PDF. PDF is also a vector one. And uh, you have EPS also. There are many other formats which you have. These are made up of shapes and uh, lines, you can say, right? So they are made up of uh, some calculation. That's why when you blur them, I mean, when you zoom in, it will not blur. So for the icons and logos, we might want to use the size, the smallest size as 16 by 16 pixel. And then we might want to, you know, use it uh, for a very large one also. So yeah, uh, yeah, the Photoshop and Illustrator, they both can alter the images, AI powered generate fill. We are going to use that only today. So right now I'm just explaining the difference so you can understand better and choose your software accordingly. So if you want to go for development of raster images, working with the images and uh, where you want the colors to be maintained. In raster images, it is a good blend of colors. The color mixing is very good. And in vector images, maybe you will get a sharp edge. So you might not see so a uh, very good color mixing over there, right? That's the difference and do's and I mean pros and cons of both of them. So for a quick example here, you can see the SVG image over here is quite clear on the small size and in the bigger layout also. But in this case, in the PNG, when you zoom in, it might give you a blurry result. OK, so according to your requirement, you can choose the software. We are going to work with Photoshop. Photoshop can export the graphics in vector format. It's not like it's not going to export the graphic in vector format. And same goes for Illustrator and InDesign also. But there is expertise, right? So Photoshop is an expert in development of normal images. Now we will be seeing how Photoshop works and how uh, I mean, uh, we are going to use the AI tool in Photoshop to generate image using the generate uh, AI tool, right? And Photoshop works best with the image editing and exporting of raster graphics, mainly used for digital media. 
so we are going to use the artificial intelligence to create something great in photoshop let us see what it is hope my screen is visible and you can see the photoshop uh, is open right now i have just opened a simple image over here you can use any image of your choice okay it doesn't matter and to gen use the generative ai you need to make a selection so the selection tools let me see if i can oh uh, yeah let me make it this way so you can see the screen what i'm doing right so the selection tools are over here on the left sidebar you can use any of the selection tools you can use a rectangle circle or you can go for lasso tool which is like your custom cut you want to make so i just want to select this much it okay let me do one thing let me select this whole area maybe i want to show a bigger house over here not this a small one whenever you make a selection in the new version of photoshop this might not be there in the older version but in the latest version in the 2020 after 2022 you will be able to see this generative fill option and when you click on the generative fill it's going to ask you what do you want to generate okay so yeah i'll uh, share the link for the adobe's website where you can download the photoshop but yes you will need to get a license for it right it's a paid version it's not a open source it's not free of cost so yeah you will need to get a license for the whole adobe creative cloud and uh, you can go for the trial it uh, gives you the trial for one week and uh, yeah you can do that i'll share the link by the end of the webinar okay so when we make a selection it's going to ask us what do you want to do with it so i'm just going to type here um big house with lights on right so i want that over here once i click on generate this is going to generate uh, the prompt uh, i have given a prompt message over here now it's going to generate the results it might be according to what you needed and it is going to match the result according to your uh, nearby contents as well so it's going to give you some options over here and this is going to work only when you are online it's going to search for the online version i'm using the 2023 version here so it's going to take some time because it is going to search the uh, best options going to display you what you can choose from and once you click on generate depending on your computer ram and the speed of your internet it will give you the results right so let's just be patient and let it work the charm over here and that's the you'll see in some time how you can modify the image completely right let's just give it some time over here okay can you see it just replaced that old house if anyone looks at this image they won't be able to guess okay from where did i get it right so it's like a okay sorry so it's like you have created a whole new image over here right and you can see what all options you have over here also you will get the panel in the properties you can see multiple other options as well you can choose the one which you find the best i don't like this one i just like the first one because in the second one also i can see there is some blurriness over the cloud and uh, it's not giving me a very good house so the first one looks good to me now i want to do something else also i maybe want to convert this into uh some kind of a waterfall this much portion in, instead of a cliff i want a waterfall so you can make yeah so you can make a uh, this much portion you can select it okay and i'm going to just uh, give the generative fill you need to be very specific of what you want in the prompt waterfall from the cliff let's generate and see what result it is going to give us later on using the tools of photoshop you can make the image better by applying some uh, you know brightness adjustment and uh, layer adjustment overall you you can blend the colors very well right again this is going to take time but uh, yeah 
Great. So you might have you uh, so Bolin, you might have even used it in your projects, and I hope you are liking the tool, right? So let's wait for some more time. Then we'll see the waterfall is going to. I mean, it's going to replace with the waterfall, but uh, I'll need to make some more changes to make it look more real. Maybe over here also, I would like to get the waterfall effect, right? Just a few more minutes. So based on your prompt, different results are going to appear. OK, it's just loading. Yeah, so I think I'll need to change this one. The third one looks uh, OK. Right now, the results which I've got, if I'm not satisfied with it, I can click on generate again. It will give me more options again. And you can choose from that if you are satisfied with the result that you have got. Maybe I can use this one like it's a small area over here, which is indicating that, OK, there is some waterfall and over here I can convert this also into a water body, replace this area with some water. OK, so it will give more realistic look like uh, there is a waterfall and uh, water is coming from there. Then you have a kind of a lake. So. I'm just generate click. I have just clicked on generate once again for the waterfall only because maybe I was not happy with the previous variations. You can use the previous variations if you like. If you don't like it, you can click on generate again with the same prompt or maybe use a different prompt and try again. And it is going to generate the results over here. So let's just wait for some more time. OK. Uh, yeah. Because in the meanwhile, it won't be possible for me to make another selection. So let's just wait. It should give me the results very quickly. If you want to cancel at any point of time, you think that, OK, it's uh, uh, I don't want to search for this one. Maybe you want to change your prompt or anything. You can click on the cancel and uh, that is completely fine. But uh, over here, I just want to make sure it gives me slight a, a bit different option. So yeah, it has given me something similar only, not much difference. OK, this one is like quite far off. There is a waterfall and then something is appearing. So maybe depending on your um, suitability, like what do you want to use? You can do that. I'm going to use this one only. This one looks good to me. Now in the first layer of the image, Iceland, I'm again going to make a selection. Can you see it's automatically creating the layers on top only? It's not merging it with my original layer. So if I want to see the original image, this was my original image, right? Now over here, let's go and select this area as well to make it much more realistic. Right. And generate fill I'm giving some prompt again because I want to fill this area with the water, right? OK, so some uh, over here, Hanima, sometimes you want to maybe create some graphic for your use. You want to generate a poster or anything. You might use the generative fill in that case. So you want to replace a part of your image and modify it to present something else. Then we use the AI tool to modify and edit the images. It's just like image editing. That's all. OK, no worries, Gajesh. So see the AI tools, if you want to create an AI tool, that is a completely different topic altogether. And uh, whatever, if you want to avoid the biases, gives them variety of uh, data to work on, right? If you have given only two varieties and you expect the result to be different, it won't be different. So you have to give at least 50 data samples and different different data samples, not similar. OK, so as many variations as it captures, it uh, gives you the result. Just like in the phone unlock the face recognition that you have given, it captures your face in different different lighting it different different angles and then gives you the result, right? So it's the same like that. OK, so it did not give me a very good result. This is not what I wanted. Let me. Just give lake over here because it's uh, simply, you know, uh, not giving a very good waterfall to me. 
I did not want another waterfall in my image. And you can see the layering of the Photoshop. This is also very important, right? Let me make these bigger. So you can see the layering order of the uh, uh, waterfall right now. This is below. So I might want to pull it up after the waterfall from the cliff. So these order you might want to change. Just gonna try last this part and then I'm going to shift it and show you some of the options for color blend, like uh, how you can smooth in your image if there is any variation, right? As you can see, these are all masks which are created by generative film. So you have to maintain the order in which you are showing the result. Taking slightly more time than expected, but uh, yeah. As I said, sometimes uh, it depends on the internet speed and your uh, RAM which you are using. So if you are using more than 16 GB RAM, this process might be super quick. If you're using 32 GB or more, you can definitely see the change over there. And uh, yeah, so the lake is coming out good, but I need it over here on the top. Can you see now it's all blended? When the lake was at the bottom, I could see the cut of the cliff. So I need to maintain the order of my layers also. Now this particular image, no one could have imagined that this was the starting point. Right. You can also extend your images. You can make the selection. OK. And then you can uh, go for other options as well. You can create a mask from the selection. You can modify your selection. You can invert the selection if you want. OK, so the name of the tool, basically I'm using Adobe CC here, right? Inside Adobe Creative Cloud, I'm using Photoshop CC. So you will need to download the Adobe Creative Cloud and inside that you will be able to install Photoshop. Now, once my graphic is created. Let's try to do something else also over here. OK, let's try to go for image. And even if you want to change the image size, you can do that. Right. And this is the original image. If you want to work with the image size, you can definitely extend your images over here. But right now what I want, I want to get so I want to get some smoothness over here. So I'll use the image adjustment tool. And let's use levels to level out all the brightness and contrast here so that it blends up. I'm using the adjustment tool over here, layer adjustment or image adjustment. Let's use instead of image, let's go for layer adjustment so that it applies on all the layers, not just one image. OK. So now this is going to be applied on all the uh, layers below it, wherever you use the layer adjustment. And you can anytime adjust it over here. Can you see it's working on the whole layer now? Maybe I want a darkness in my image, right? Because the lights are on of the house, so it's probably not so sunny. You probably want to do some more adjustments like layer and new adjustment layer, brightness and contrast. OK, so brightness and contrast is there. Probably want to reduce the brightness. Increase the contrast a bit. You can even add a layer for uh, adding your tints or hues, right? So you can make the color balance. You can use hue or saturation. In this, I can apply a hue of blue color maybe, right? How much hue do you want? You can maintain that and you can use the saturation over here. Lightness, right? Now, this is not giving me very good results, so I can use the blend modes as well. Like I have used darken and it has darkened the whole uh, layer over here. Whatever blend suits you the best. I'm using darker color, lighten. All these options are there for the Photoshop. You can use any one of them. I think uh, I like this one better. It gives me more evening kind of a look. If you want to adjust just one individual layer, like over here, the result is way too bright. It's looking like the house is on fire. 
So you can go for image adjustment also. Before you do the image adjustment, always advisable to create a duplicate of your layer. So I'm just going to duplicate this layer right now. OK, so control J is the shortcut key if you want to use it. And now in this, I will apply the image adjustment. Individual image adjustment I'm doing. So you can see sometimes it might get a bit not so good. So let's uh, go for image adjustment color, maybe the color balance. And uh, probably increase the blue amount and reduce the yellowishness in it. Don't worry about this particular area. You can always blend it well. OK, let's click on OK and uh, I'm going to use my original one. And in this one, you can use some blend modes. Let's go for this one. So yeah, based on what you want, you can do the adjustments. You can apply the effects also to blend your image much better. Now, if I want to show you the original one and the ones which we have modified, I'll select all of this. Let me group it in one folder. So this is my original image and this is what I have done with it, right? So it's like you have created a whole new image altogether. You can use this generative AI to not just get these elements. You can use it to get some other elements as well. Like uh, suppose in the original image only, I wanted some sheep or some herd over here rather than just this option. OK, so let's go with that. Just a second. Let me use the lasso tool here. So over here, maybe I want some cattle. You can even use the generative AI to get a person sitting on the rock or something like that. Any prompt that you give, it's going to give you the results for it. And accordingly, you can do the modifications. Let's just wait for some more time to let it complete the generative AI. Just a few minutes more. Then maybe you want to even extend your image. So I'll show you the option for that as well. It's just going to take a little bit time more, I think. So I've just given one cow, so it has just generated that one. If you want to use a cow like this, you want to generate any cattle, you can do that. And if you want to modify the size of just this one, you can even modify the size over here. If you think that, OK, it's looking way too big. Let's uh, probably reduce the size here. Right, and you can maybe create a copies of these to get multiple uh, cattle over here. Right, you will need to do some modification using the other tools of Photoshop. As I have said, you might want to merge these. Right, so you can do that by giving the clone stamp tool and there is brush healing tool. Right, so these tools can also be used to merge your pixels. And uh, suppose I want to use the brush healing. Let me use a sample from here. OK, one second. OK, so I'll just try to use it over here. Right. Just to blend the edges. So it would be much better if you use the clone stamp along with it. But now I just want to show you one more option in the Crop also, you have the generative expand. OK, so if I increase the size of the crop here and give generative expand. OK, let me do one thing. Let me choose it in this manner. Ratio, I want uh, some different ratio or uh, let's do one thing. Okay, usually the generative expand, it works directly. Let me try once again. Content aware fill. OK, this is the option which you need to maintain for the fill option. And then once you expand it and use the generative expand, it usually works. So it's generating the option here. Just taking some time for the generation. Basically, generative expand works in a manner like it's going to expand your image 
in more space the area that you have selected. It's just taking some time. So we'll, this is the uh, last remaining uh, option which we I wanted to show you in the generative AI. And in case you want to ask anything, you can do that. Meanwhile, I'll also share the link of download option. Right? Give me a second. <clears throat> so basically, you need to go to the Adobe's website for download. And uh, let me share the link here. And you can see the result. It has generated the image. It is giving me the variations also. What kind of variation do you want on the side? Whether you want it to be generated something like this. So this looks beautiful to me. I can generate it like this. And uh, you can see it's uh, giving you all the options. What do you want? Right? So it's like small image. I have extended it further so I can see the as uh, like assumed uh, result also. If I try to extend it further, maybe it will give me the result of uh, this river going further ahead, right? Again, as we have discussed, you can apply all the other options as well. In this case, the group which I have created in this one, I need to maybe expand my lake result. OK, so I can do that. But yeah, since it's uh, merging up with other results also, it might not be that good. You will need to modify further options here. So if you want this kind of a result, you can do so. Otherwise, this is another result of the same image. Let me group this. And this was my original image. So you can see what all things you can do with the generative AI. You can generate a person also. That's completely up to you what you want to do. And you can even generate a boat maybe over here for this lake view. I want a boat with a person. So very quickly, I'm just going to uh, demonstrate one last piece of example here, maybe to show you how a human figure will appear with this generative AI, right? So I'm just going to use boat with a man in it, right? It's a uh, easy to download the latest version. It's uh, there in the Adobe. You don't have to integrate it anyway. Uh, in the Adobe latest version, the tool is already there. Once you make the selection, it is automatically going to show you the option of generate. So yeah, let's see how our boat and the man is going to appear over here. Then anything else? Meanwhile, you want to ask. I have also shared the link for the Adobe Creative Cloud. So you can download the Creative Cloud. Inside that, you have all the tools of Adobe. If you want to go for a specific tool, you can go for just the Photoshop and uh, try the uh, you can go for the trial version also. Right. Let's see if I can open the Creative Cloud library. Meanwhile, just to show you. So once you download Adobe Creative Cloud, the Creative Cloud desktop, this is the panel from where you can access all the softwares inside the Creative Cloud. And uh, yeah, meanwhile, it is just loading. Let's see. So usually you have the list of applications inside this and uh, you might want to use RAM more than 8 GB for your, if you want to use the creative uh, softwares. I can see sometimes if you don't have the sufficient RAM, even with 16 GB at times, it's extremely slow. So yeah, because these softwares are very heavy. Initializing the creative cloud library. Once you download the Creative Cloud, if you are downloading directly the software, it will show you the software. And if you have, uh, yeah, I have shared the link in the chat itself earlier. I'll share it once again. Okay. Share the plans and time this time in case you want to go for that. Just a second. There's no integration required. It will automatically show you the option, right? And uh, yeah. For the board, I'm not exactly liking the result which I have got, but yeah, you can use a different prompt altogether. So in my case, it is not giving me a good result, not at all a good result, right? So you can play around with this one. 
and uh, try it from your side how it works, right? I'm probably going to make this boat a bit smaller because, of course, it's not so good. Just over here, right? So you can have a human figure inside it. It did not generate the on man in, with man in it, okay? So it depends what prompt you have given and how the result will appear. You can try to generate a game. So yeah, that's uh, majorly all that I wanted to discuss about the generative AI tool for now. You can experiment this. I have shared the link of uh, Adobe Creative Cloud download. Once you download it, uh, it's uh, going to open the library here and you can go for the apps option. Inside the apps, you will be able to see the list of applications which are available. So I hope that is much more clear how you can proceed with the download and everything. You can see there are multiple applications which I'm using right now with the Adobe. OK, and all of them are the latest versions. And uh, yeah, you can use any one of them. If you don't want to update, you can just uh, keep the updates off. And uh, you can see there are tons of applications. Even Animate is there for add 2D animations. They have launched many 3D tools also in the Creative Cloud. So you can use and uh, experiment with all of them. Or you can go for single subscription of just the Photoshop, nothing else, right? but you will need a paid version for it. All of this is only possible with a licensed copy. In the trial version, you might get the generate option, but again, the trial is going to be there for a week or so, not more than that. Right? So that's uh, about the generative AI tool in Photoshop. I'm just going to close this application right now. OK, so yeah. Uh, that's all from my side. And uh, before you leave the session, kindly fill in the form, feedback form. I would look forward to it. And uh, yeah, the link to it is already shared in the chat. So you can fill in the feedback form, fill in your attendance and uh, experiment with the AI tool that we have just talked about. So I hope you enjoyed the session. You have loved to know something new. And I hope you are going to experiment with it on your side as well, right? Thank you, Rishika. I'll take one minute here. Thank you yeah. all for joining the session. Uh, yeah, currently fill in the attendance sheet attached here. And uh, you can mention if you want to join any of our course or basically this uh, course, Photoshop course with uh, Rishika, you can mention your details. Even if you mail me on your details on my email ID, that would be good. Even if your team wants to join any course, you can mention those details. Yeah, and do not leave this meeting without filling the feedback form. And uh, we have many upcoming webinars. I've already shared the second link for our upcoming webinars. Uh, do check our webinars and get enrolled for uh, January, rest of the January and February.